Hello and welcome back. This time we are going to talk about programming paradigms. Uh, paradigm. What does it mean? Uh, a paradigm, programming paradigm, is a basic rule of a programming language. Uh, so, uh, some ground sense, some, some common understanding, some common baseline uh, for a specific programming language. This does not mean one programming language, one paradigm. It might be that one programming language uh, follows more than one paradigm. Eh? To understand what paradigms there are, eh? I show you or I explain them one by one and then we will see. Okay? So, one programming paradigm is imperative. From Latin imperare, this means order. Imperative programming language, programming languages do order. Huh? We're telling the CPU, the program, the logic what to do. First do this, then do this, now do this, now do that, now one by one. Book, 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 book. Huh? Execute, execute, execute. Imperative. That's one possible, a lot of things we know from programming languages are like this. Then on the other side, on the other side, we have declarative. 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 From, also from Latin, declare, this means announce. Here, I'm not giving orders. Here I'm just just describing what I want to have. And how in which which orders are necessary, I do not care. So this is more problem oriented oriented and this is a solution oriented, let's say. So here I describe what I want to have and here I describe one by one. Yeah. One example here, declarative, would be SQL. Yeah. I describe, I want to have a table which is that big and has these things inside. Yeah. Book there. Yeah. What steps, what commands needs are necessary? I don't care, honestly. Yeah. And I want to have this data out, I want to have this data. I describe which data I want to have out and whatever is necessary, let's do it. Imperative, I would do it different. Yeah? Yeah. So these are two big areas. Yeah. Imperative and declarative. Declarative, sometimes we are using declarative uh, paradigms without even noticing. Yeah? If you're programming a PLC, for instance, programming logic controllers, there is often something like a hardware configuration or something like this to do. Yeah. This is declarative. I'm describing what I want to have. I'm having this CPU, I'm having this in and output cards and so on. And I'm having this uh, remote uh, unit there. And there is should be a connection with, I don't know, this and that field bus system and so on. And suddenly, book, I can access this and how this is done. We don't know. We don't have to program. It imperative, we have programmed it declarative. Okay. So, even this is sounds a little bit strange to us when you're talking about software, it's also widely used. Okay, imperative, declarative. So, this is here, let's say, command after command. And here I missed an M. Happens. Happens, happens. And here, uh, describe. What I want 
to have. Imparare, declarare. One thing, which is also a paradigm, uh, it does not really order here somehow, but this is structured programming. Okay, structured. Structured programming means I do not write a, a, a series of elements yeah, and I want to structure those elements. Yeah. Their typical things are things like procedures, yeah, procedure or subroutines or something like this. Yeah. Then I structure my, my commands or my program into some sub portions and I can order the sub portions. Okay, I can call them again and so on. Yeah, the structured programming is well. There is also this go-to. You know, this should not be used. Uh, this was this is the goal of structured programming. Yeah, that you should not use spaghetti code with go-to. Yeah, so-called spaghetti code. You should do nicely structured things. Yeah? Procedure. Uh, do you do have a uh, possibility to? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the program is then in sequence, yeah? and there is decisions. Yeah, so selections possible. If, yeah? and of course loops. Yeah? Loops. This is structured. Yeah? Procedures, sequence, selection loop yeah. structured programming paradigm another programming paradigm is object oriented yeah. object oriented here the structuring is not in function blocks or something like this, it's in so-called objects. Yeah. I declare object. Each object can have uh, some items, some some uh, attributes. Yeah. I say this is an object for me, and the attributes are. Oh, so this is an object. This this is object cable. The attributes are length, connector, color. For instance, yeah? object-oriented programming orient is orienting itself at really existing objects and is trying to, to, to describe those objects in code as software. Yeah? And I can use methods on those objects. Yeah? For instance, in this object I could use the method rip. <laughs> Doesn't make sense, but yeah, or plug, plug left, plug right, would maybe make more sense than rip. <laughs> so object-oriented things. Uh, we will talk about this quite a length, you know, because we are going to talk about object-oriented programming when we're talking about programming C++. Yeah. We also will use the Arduino platform for this. Yeah. There are things like Polymorphism. Yeah. Polymorph. It can be polymorph. This means there are functions, uh, there are uh, methods inside our objects, yeah, functions, uh, which can do different things yeah, depending on how they are called. They are the same name, yeah, but maybe there are other attributes I give them, other parameters I give to the function, and suddenly it's doing something else. Polymorphism. Yeah? The, the, also, these objects to capsule the data. Yeah? It's a capsule. And I cannot look inside. This is also... I'm having an interface of the object. I can access the object, but what is inside, this may can be protected. It's an object-oriented model.
Yeah? And also, I can inherit. I can produce child objects which inherit some parameters, some or all attributes of their parents. Yeah? And I can extend the functionality or specialize the functionality. Maybe. Yeah? This is object oriented. Now this is basically this is this is what you going to hear from me about paradigms. You should know there are paradigms, you should know what is imperative, what is declarative, what is structured, what is object oriented. There are a little bit more. You can always go in details in all of the topics. Yeah. For us this should be enough, I would say. Uh, also, some uh, program languages do not only are strict to one thing, like for instance C++, it's usually object oriented, but you can also program structured and it's imperative, okay, yeah, you can program structured, and but you can also can object, do object oriented things. Yeah? Other, other things like small dog for instance strictly strictly yeah so it also depends on the use program blah, 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 blah. again programming language uh what how how sharp or how binding those those things are yeah, for you yeah so this is paradigms next time Next time we are going to talk about uh, types. Yeah. Up to now we just call it data. Yeah. There is some data. Yeah. And now a lot of programming languages give these data types. What is behind and what is the benefit of this? Yeah. And how is it handled if I do not have to give a type in a certain programming language? We will hear next time. Yeah. For this video, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.